First open back in 1975. There's a look inside the iconic Mercedes-Benz Superdome in downtown New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Philadelphia Eagles. Breeze now on first down. And his first pass is incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Outside handoff to the right side. If you're a running back, you love getting the ball early, so you have vision to see what's happening in front of you. Right tackle likes that call. Big play for him, but don't forget about the guys you always tell me on the backside sealing off. When they talk about cutoff blocks, making sure no one can leak from the backside, they can run a play down. Yeah, nobody leaked. Big play. Now a play fake here on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield stripe. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. From midfield, here's Breeze. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. Fletcher Cox, he's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Back deep is Darren Sproles. Philadelphia getting the football back here. And when you discuss the Eagles this season, it seems like every week we kind of go back and forth. Hey, they're they're done. They're no, still they're alive. alive. They're done. No, they're, they're alive. alive. And that week 15 win, I don't think many people saw that coming against the Rams in L.A. I will guarantee many didn't see that coming for a couple of reasons. One, Philadelphia was coming off of a bruising battle. They lost in overtime against Dallas, where Dallas ran, I believe, 90-plus plays against them. That's hard to bounce back from, yet they did it. Also, the Rams were coming off a game where they didn't play really well on the road against Chicago. We all expected them to get back in form at home. So, no, not many people saw that coming at all. Give Philadelphia credit. They've kept themselves alive for a possible playoff spot and a chance to defend their Super Bowl championship. This man was a saint for three years. It's Darren Sproles. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down now, Adams. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Tackle is made by Cameron Jordan. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, 
hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Now falls. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. That's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Well, nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The football going back to the New Orleans Saints. And I wanted to ask you, Charles, for the Saints, how you think they stack up against the other teams near the top of the NFC, the Rams, the Bears? Where do you think they figure in? Well, they can score well enough that if the Rams set a heavy pace, they can go out and they can score with them and stay right there. They have enough defense that if Chicago makes it a low-scoring defensive affair, they got enough defense to win that way. So my answer in short order is they stack up with anyone. In a lot of ways, I think everyone has to figure out they stack up with New Orleans mm. because at the end of the day, Drew Brees is calling plays for the New Orleans Saints and throwing the football downfield. He could be the difference in any big game. And maybe they have a little extra motivation with the way their season ended last year against Minnesota. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. On second down, Kamara. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was, because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it will be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. On first and 10, here's Breeze. And Watson has it, right side. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. Shotgun now for Breeze. He gets this one complete to Traquan Smith. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead right. area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Finds his man, Watson, over the middle. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. This is Ingram on first and 10. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They stay on the ground. This time it's Camara. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, OK, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. And the pressure gets to Breeze as he's taken down. Nigel Bradham, 
coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18, running with Camara. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. That one good for 14 yards. And it'll be third down. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far is working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Ready. 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 From the gun on third down, Breeze. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And they're going to fake it. He wants to throw it here. And how about this? It's complete. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. So they pulled a little rabbit out of their hat nearly for six. Almost got the fake into the end zone. Either way, they're set up really nicely. So we all felt for the illusion, didn't we? Did they <laughs> saw someone in half on well, stage well on that one? I mean, well that played. was something right there. We fell for the fake in a big way, as did the defense. And look what it turned into, a monster play. And now they're set up inside the five-yard line. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. One man in the backfield, that's Ingram on second and goal. Ready? They'll look to run with Ingram. And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. Mark Ingram taking it in from a yard. And the Saints have taken the early lead. Well, Brandon, he just followed his nose, and his nose took him to the end zone. But how about the big guys up front giving him at least a stalemate in order to find that space? Yeah, the O-line won the battle in the trenches there, didn't they? Lutz good on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Lutz now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. So we got three and one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. On second down, Adams. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. Foles. And this is going to be incomplete. 
I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Pulled in at the 24. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run, pass, mix, and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, right. if they start to no creep way. up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. A gain of four on the play, and they'll be faced with a third in inches. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to make it fourth down. I'm getting the sense that Fletcher Cox is making offensive linemen want to take the week off when they have to play against him. <laughs> it's a regular routine for him, isn't it? It really is. That play there, that's him all day long. Good luck trying to block him and keep him from disrupting your offense. The Eagles' offense back out onto the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. They go play action here on first down. And that one is incomplete. And it also concludes quarter number one. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two. They've got it second and ten to start things out. Now flags come in here. Look like one of the Eagles might have moved. Half the distance there, so that moves the ball from the six all the way back to the three. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. Call it a gain of five, and they're going to face a third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Foles. And that is incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they have little chance of winning this one. The Eagles send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Taking it about the 36. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer. 
create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And across the midfield stripe into Eagle territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Ready. Ready. On second down, here's Breeze. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Ready, ready, Throwing now is Breeze. He is going to find Hill here. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Ready, yellow lady, yellow lady. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. To throw, it's Breeze. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Nothing open downfield, and he had to get that one out in a hurry because he just knew he was about to take a big shot. Probably couldn't get his legs into the throw. Became an all-arm throw trying to check it down to his running back. Incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Well, again, they'll throw with Breeze. Oh, look at Thomas, wide open. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. No, I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And down to the 20, he'll go before heading out of bounds. A gain of 11 and a first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Michael Thomas, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Saints now add six to their lead. Lots of look to add the extra point. Lutz with the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. Lutz now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. 
Philadelphia getting set to take the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. Three yards on the pickup there and it'll be second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And the reception made by Alshon Jeffrey. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They'll run on first down. Adams, and down to the 36-yard line here. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, the good defensive position, able to affect the play. The Eagles on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. They're up against a third and one situation. On play action, they'll throw. The attempt on the dive, and he has it. What a catch. It's his first catch, and it'll be good for 15 at a first down. When you're a player of his stature, you don't just circle the games on your team's calendar. You circle, circle the, the Pro Bowl? <laughs> without a doubt. That's a game that you just figure you're going to be in each and every year. That's because of catches like that. That's why he goes. Now on first down, he'll drop the throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. It is tough to complete passes against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. On second down now, Adams. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? He'll look to throw. And that is caught. It's Aguilar for the Eagle touchdown. Nelson Aguilar, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Eagles have cut it back within a score. They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide, so there, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They managed to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass.
Elliott now to kick this one away. The return man is Hill. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Ready? The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Defensively, it was Avante Maddox with a tackle. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Ready? Ready? Breeze on the draw, gives to Camara, And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Corey Graham brings him down. The Saints on third down. down, two for five to this point. Here it's third and three. Four down, four down. Ready. Breeze gives it up to Ingram. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Ertz over the middle. And down he'll go at the 25. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Here's a second and five now from the 25. They'll set up to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Eagles on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and five. They'll set up a throw. Screen pass to Sproles. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sensed that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, go, go. that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Now a play fake here on first down. And he will not be able to get away as Foles is taken down. Cameron Jordan in there to bury him for a loss of 11. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> well, they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. And they'll run it here with Adams. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. A.J. Klein on the tackle there.
On third down, that's Adams. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. And now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The Eagles send out their punter now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And the Saints will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Waiting. Waiting. Breeze now on first down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Thomas. Give him 30 yards there. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks, and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. The big play has them all the way out near midfield for a first and 10. On first and 10, here's Breeze. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Thomas. Give him a couple on the catch, it's second and eight. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Ready, ready. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. Breeze picked off by his former teammate, Malcolm Jenkins. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Eagles defense gets a pick six TD. Well, we know this defense has athleticism. Spots like that prove us right. I love the way that you spotlighted the athleticism because you and I both know the best athletes on the field, they play on defense. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I was a kicker. you got to remember that now. Come on. Come on. Fine. Elliott Good with a PAT. And we've got a tie game here in a back and forth first half. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Try again after the pick six. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Smith. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. The Saints coming out now to take the field. Just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Ready. You ready? Breeze now on first down. 
And Watson has it right side. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. Now they they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Back-to-back -back good plays. Have them on the move on first down. Throwing on first down is Breeze. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stuff. Breeze again here on second and 10. He's going to sling the touchdown. New Orleans. Michael Thomas as the first half is winding down. And the Saints have moved out in front. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. What's good on the extra point? And the lead is now 21-14. Lutz now to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. The drive starts with a handoff to Adams. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Now falls. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They'll throw now on the final play. Going to look deep into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Marcus Williams. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. So it's halftime here in New Orleans with the Saints out in front. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. 
These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. On the stop there defensively, Tyler Davison. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Right back to him on first down. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 12 yards there as they move the chains. That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. While other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy is going to keep getting the football. And that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. On first down, Adams. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Foles. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. There's Foles. field at the 49. Sheldon Rankins in there to drop him for a four-yard loss, and it'll be fourth down. The Eagles send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, Let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense. Yeah. We've got the deep. We've got the deep. Eagle pressure. Too much this time. Down he goes. Brandon Graham in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage. Not a great start. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Breeze hands to Ingram. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it third and 13. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The Saints on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Yellow lady. From the gun, it's Breeze. Over the middle, complete. It's Carr. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. 
sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard and you probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. And he is not going to get away. The rush was too strong, and this is going to wind up a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt. And if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. This will be fielded at the 17. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you content to play the field position game? You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The pro bowler Fletcher Cox there to get him down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. They'll run it now out of the gun. Gets through, and now an opening. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Ready? A 10th carry here for Mark Ingram. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Now they'll throw with Breeze. And his throw is incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot, but they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. On third and long, it's Breeze. On the crossing route, complete. That's Thomas. And he is taken down deep in Philadelphia territory. A big play. Breeze finding Thomas. 42 yards. 
Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Back to the running game. It's Ingram. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Another nice gain. 16 yards there at a first down again. And this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Two receivers left, one to the right. There's Breeze. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. In for the score. And the Saints add on to their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Now Sean Payton going to say, let's go for two on this one. I got the ready. You're waiting. Shotgun now for Breeze. And he's got it. So the try for two successful. And that bumps their lead up even further. So they elect to pass there on the two-point try. Sometimes can prove risky there. It worked out. Yeah, and I love how you bring up that it can prove risky because if you get it intercepted and they return it, that's two points for the defense, but not on that play. Lutz now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And last time they surrendered the safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. And it's second down. I do want to take this time to mention that the next few months, very big in the competitive Madden Championship Series. A few weeks ago, we saw Skimbo go back-to-back. -back. That's right, back-to-back, -back, second straight year. Right. You're fired up. And then next up, the Madden Challenge, and it's a $190,000 prize pool, and the ladders to qualify for that tournament now available in Mutt Draft Mode. Exciting things. By the way, what would your... What, you have a game of time? Trying? No, I do not have a gamer tag. You must be a good player in order to earn a moniker. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. Let's go. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. You got him. You got him. You got him. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 46. They'll drop the throw. Jeffrey with a catch left side. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. 
It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Jeffrey reels it in over the middle. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Looking to throw. It's brought in left side by Tate. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. The Eagles on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. Here it's third and two. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Eagles behind on the scoreboard, but with the football here as we start the fourth quarter. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. It'll be a three-yard pickup, and it brings up second and goal. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And it's caught. And the snap will come inside the five at the four. They get only a yard there. Now it's third and goal. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Set him back five. How crucial will those five yards be? We'll see as they come up again here, third and goal. Back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. The throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Now to try the Eagle field goal, Jake Elliott from the left half. Should be a fairly easy one here. And Elliott puts this one through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still going to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back into it. And as you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll make it across the 20 
as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara, oh, what a juke into space. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Back to the ground, this time with Ingram. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Ready. Ingram again, a first down carry. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and it'll be second and 12. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Waiting. On second down, here's Breeze. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. The Saints on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and 11. Ready. Now Breeze. And that is incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. This to make it a three-score game late. And he hits the upright, but it caroms in anyway. Boy, plenty of distance there as he banks it in. And that'll push the lead up to 17. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Burt has it left side. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 yards through the air and a first down. 
There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. The speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? On first down, he'll drop to throw. That ball's caught. Aguilar right side. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That's 30 yards now in the last two plays, back-to-back 15-yarders, -back and they're rolling. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Let's go. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Cameron Jordan getting him once again. His third sack of the afternoon. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He shakes him off. And boy, that one drops incomplete. But if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. Tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice long soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. And once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. Let's go. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. They're going to look to throw. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Cameron Jordan. Who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Cameron Jordan in there yet again. My goodness, make it five sacks for him now in this one game alone. They begin on the ground with Kamara. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage, they've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Tackle made that time by Brandon Graham. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. The Saints on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This will be third and six. Ready, yellow lady. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. And yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. Ready. We're waiting. After the penalty, it's Ingram. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, 
but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Here's Thomas Morstead now. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And out now come the Eagles. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Now Foles. And it's going to be incomplete. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. Here we go, here now we they go. face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Foles. Aguilar has it. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. There's Foles. And that's incomplete. The linebacker, Demario Davis, got a hand in to break that one up. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw here. And that'll be incomplete. Eli Apple, good to the core there as he gets in and knocks it away. There are a good number of coaches that anytime they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. He'll look to throw. And this is Ertz with it, right side. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is incomplete. The Eagles unable to convert there on fourth. And the Saints will have the football back. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game, and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> A tenth carry for Kamara. And he's going to bull his way forward to the 48. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. 
That gives him 98 yards in this game, and he's got to feel pretty good about that, but the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brent, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's at 98? I think someone has told him by now, and here's the thing. Getting to 100 or more is tangible evidence that you've had a nice day running the football, and that's what his offensive line wants for him and for themselves. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. The best defensive lineman, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. The Saints on third down. They're hitting at just 30 percent, three for ten. This is third and four. Everyone's got four. Four down. Ready. Yellow lady. Wait a From midfield, here's Breeze. He is going to find Hill here. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he's going to take it down to about the 35 here. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. To throw is Breeze. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Arnold. And he gets it down to the 32. It'll be a pickup of four. Good enough to earn him yet another first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because... Both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game, they also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.